Hello and welcome to Take This TV, the television book club podcast where each week we record an episode or two and talk about it with our friends in the fandom. Uh, it says that that's you. Oh, wow. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carmen Askernese and I'm joined by Kimberly Woods. Hello. Hello, hello, hot potatoes. We're watching Constellation this season, and uh, today we're talking about episode three. Yep, which is called Somewhere in Space Hangs My Heart. Uh, the space agencies begin their investigation into the ISS collision. Joe struggles to reconnect with Magnus and Alice. Mm-mm-mm. What an episode. Woo! <laughs> Last episode we had some theories about, you know, brother and sister of uh, Henry and what, Irina? Is that how we say her name? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Call me Irene, but I think it's Irina. Um, and yeah, so we kicked this episode off seeing Bud. Bud. Who Bud. is not Henry. <laughs> Who is not Henry. Who <laughs> is uh, at a convention on a cruise ship. Yes. So our, um, our fr- friend and director... Uh, Andrew put this together and the uh, previously on kind of makes it more apparent too that Bud and Henry are in two separate locations, but we don't know, are they in the same world coexisting or are they in parallel universes? Like what's happening? Yeah, what is happening? We don't know. Universes? I don't know. (laughs) Who knows? Um, So Bud is at essentially like Comic-Con on a cruise ship um, and Henry is... Um, in some kind of lab, running tests on his baby, his mm-hmm. precious baby. Mm-hmm. And Henry is determined to see this uh, signal that he got, this double quantum signal, which he saw right when Joe landed back on Earth and when he went to test his baby out. And he can't seem to duplicate that again. Like He can't seem to replicate that. His lab, you know, his other lab companion is like... It's not working. It's not She's happening. Not I don't a see believer. it. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, and then he only sees it when he's by himself, and he can't capture it. It's like showing a single thing when he's like trying to capture it on his phone, and he ends up like drawing it. Yeah. And so for whatever the reason, it won't appear on his camera. So he traces it, um, and then shows it to his lab partner who still doesn't believe him because she's like, well, you just trace this on a piece of paper. That's not evidence. Um, so they're trying to figure out, well, I guess yeah. specifically Henry is trying yeah, to figure yeah. out how and to she's like, why this. do you see it and I don't? And he's like, I don't know, maybe the observer effect? Yeah, oh, I'm not so, familiar with which what that Which I'm is. not familiar with that either. <laughs> <laughs> that Let us know in the comments, what is the observer <laughs> effect? We don't know, but that's why Henry thinks that only he is seeing this. Um, and while he's sort of like talking to his lab partner, he's looking out the window and everybody's kind of at this compound while they're investigating what happened at the space station. And Alice is the kid's name, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, daughter. Alice is playing with her friend, uh, Paul's daughter. And they're playing hide and seek. Um, and Alice is running to hide. But Henry notices that there are two Alices outside of the window when he's yep. looking. It reminded me of that moment in The Matrix when Keanu sees the black cat go by twice. uh, And they're like, oh, it's a glitch in The Matrix. The agents are coming. Um, And so I think that's the first time we see someone else, like, witness Mm -hmm. there being two versions of someone. Mm -hmm. And then uh, shortly after that, we get Alice herself uh, seeing a version of herself who she mistakes for her, her buddy stomping on her. Yeah, so she's peeking under a truck, so she can't see the whole person, but she sees that they're um, carrying the rabbit that she gave to her friend, and they throw the rabbit into the puddle and step on it. Yeah, so she's mad at her friend, but really it was this, like, other version of her. Um, So she's also seeing double. Yes, doppelgangers galore. (laughs) (laughs) Who's really who? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. But we get this crazy conversation between... Henry and Alice, where he comes to join her um, at, at the playground, and he kind of talks about quantum physics. He did. <laughs> I, I feel like there are a lot of, it's at so least for me, I'm like, there's so many Matrix parallels yeah. in here. It reminds me of when Neo's at, like, the park talking to the Oracle or on yeah. the playground or whatever. And um, so Henry kind of breaks down for Alice and really for us um, what he's studying. 
and their quantum theory. Mm-hmm. Um, which, like, when when he explained it, were you like, ah? Yes. Okay. You're like, okay, okay. You're definitely giving us sort of the theme of this show. Um, so he talks about how things can be in two different states at the same time. And there's also a moment, there's a liminal space where sometimes something doesn't want to decide what state it's in until somebody looks at it and decides. Mm. Until somebody sees it. Just like Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. Yes. So (laughs) um, he explains this to Alice and it gives us an idea of sort of like what may be happening with some of the characters that we're seeing. And I don't know if that is related to the observer effect, but let us know. It might be. Let us know what you think. (laughs) Um, we also learned that Joe's mission on the space station was to monitor the effects of long-term space travel on the astronauts, the, the mental and physical effects, um, which is really ironic given the situation that she's in. So she tells everyone that she saw a body, a cosmonaut, that hit the space station, but um, people don't believe her, uh, and she was the only one to see this. There is no evidence of it. Yeah. Um, now, and it's, it's not, not so much that they are gaslighting her, but we get hints that like maybe Joe is in some kind of alternate reality or that there are elements of things that are happening that only she can see. Also, she's the only one of all the astronauts who heard an alarm happen before the collision. Um, nobody else heard it but her. Yes. So, yeah, we get a hint of, of that as well. Oh, my gosh. I like how this show is like... It doesn't over-explain things. It, it, like, trusts the audience to be smart and to pick up on little clues. Yeah. and it keeps it moving, which is great. The pacing is so good. <laughs> it's wild. Yes. Um, um, but you're right. So we're also getting these, like, weird uh, neurological effects that we see in Joe that we're starting to question, too, and wonder, like, is this from her time in space? Is this from her, you know, when she lost oxygen up there? So she, um, she mistakes... Paul's wife's name? Yes, she calls, she calls Paul's wife Erica. And I wrote down, he's creeping. <laughs> but, <laughs> but maybe Paul's not creeping. And in whatever universe Joe comes from, Paul's wife's name is Erica. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, I think it's really cool that, like, there are these little moments that uh, like that that you just kind of will just blow off of like, okay, whatever, it doesn't matter. But mm-hmm. once you look at the whole picture together, you're like, oh my gosh, that was a clue. Um, I thought it was funny, too. We have this moment when I think Joe's going for an MRI and we have Alice being like, that doesn't look like mom. She looks like she's dead. Yeah. And so we're getting it like, we're like, okay, is Joe dead in the alternate reality? Like what Alice is seeing is like this dead person. <laughs> That's a good point. I didn't yeah. pick up on that. Um, Joe also tries to re- reconnect with uh, Magnus. And uh, we get the impression that, like, whatever their relationship was before Joe went to the space station wasn't very good. Um, it was not. It was not. It was, <laughs> it was, like, sweet and sad at the same time when they were having dinner together. And she, like, reaches for his hand, and he's like, oh, uh, the wine. Yeah. I was yeah. Like, oh. And she, like, compliments him at some point. He's just, like, shocked. Like, wow, that that was a compliment. Yeah. Like, you're just like, whoa, this is, like, ice cold relationship here. I don't know. Starved yeah. for affection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they do have a moment where they they kiss, and the sparks kind of rekindle for, mm-hmm. for a bit. Yeah. Um, but again, it's like, is this a different version of joe a joe that loves her husband who never stopped loving her husband and didn't have an affair or whatever happened with that other guy frederick yes well because we get some hints of because after they uh hook up then uh you know joe's in the bathroom and, and she kind of asks magnus um what's what's so different about me and he says that you look at me like you actually like me and she's really surprised because she's like what well, i love you like why, yeah. why would you say that yeah but Maybe whatever Maybe. this reality is, that was not the case. So. And then we also have Frederick, who's taken aback when he, like, just casually reaches over and tries to, like, caress her face after <laughs> one of the interrogations. Like, it's just, you know, he's used to this. And she's like, what are you doing? And that's weird for him. So this version of Joe, <laughs> he doesn't understand either. Yeah. It's, it's also, like... Everybody seems to be like, man, Joe's being really weird, but they're all being very, like, yeah. cautious about bringing it up, which 
I mean, makes sense because they just all have this traumatic experience on the space station. Um, I'm really glad that we get time with them back on Earth because I thought the whole show would be this one situation on the space station. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that we're like, okay, that's over. Let's like figure yeah. out what happens next. Yeah, me too. Um, there's another another moment too where she thinks that their car is red. Yeah, she's like, what, "What's this car?" And Alice and Magnus are like, "It's our car. It's always been blue." Mm hmm. <laughs> and she drops the glass because she thinks it will float. Uh, so she's still adjusting to being back. Yeah. But there are some um, some differences that she is noticing now or that she is uh, feeling like she didn't notice before. Mm -hmm. And what, during the hearing, they say that um, they think Joe is experiencing hypoxia, mm -hmm. where yeah. like there might be some memory loss or because of her experience with lack of oxygen, she may be hallucinating, yeah. which also like goes back to what we saw in the first two episodes of Joe is potentially an unreliable narrator. Yeah. Um, and it's like, is she experiencing hypoxia? Is she in an alternate universe or yeah. reality? Like, what's happening? Yeah. Um, but and thankfully for Joe, like, some of the other characters are also having yeah. symptoms. Yeah. I love that the show kind of plays with that, too, because we're like, okay, which might be that and which is actually... Yeah. Yeah. I was concerned after the first two episodes of, like... <laughs> Oh, gosh, I hope this isn't all just some big dream sequence and, like, stuff actually makes sense. Yeah. But thankfully, things are starting to yeah. kind of fall into place. Um, we also see that Joe and the other astronauts are given uh, these red and yellow pills that we've been seeing Henry and uh, <laughs> Irina yeah. uh, take. So they just introduce that as a part of their new daily regimen now that they're back on Earth. They and, yeah they yeah. give her the pills and, and she's like what is this and they're like oh it's just vitamins yeah, B twelve yeah folic acid you know vitamins don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> so now she's taking that um, yeah we also see Bud take that as well so yeah it's pretty crazy do you oh. think it's actually vitamins no <laughs> no I don't think so I don't either think so. yeah no I don't think so I want to talk about that moment too where Joe falls in the hallway. Mm. and calls for Magnus and when you know her daughter's wanting to get Magnus she sees that wardrobe again oh yeah I forgot <laughs> like, about oh that oh my gosh here we go again it's the wardrobe with Alice's necklace on it and we're just like why does what she is keep seeing happening? it happening what is the deal with this wardrobe maybe okay maybe it's like a lion the witch in the wardrobe situation where like she transported to a new world to cross over yeah. it's entanglement oh yeah it's schrodinger's wardrobe yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't know it, it was definitely like we get the impression that only she is seeing that wardrobe because yeah. magnus comes to pick her up and her and alice are there yeah they don't react to there being a random wardrobe no, in the hallway don't. or the alternate like universe version of her has something bad with the wardrobe yeah trauma maybe uh, <laughs> we'll find out i guess we'll see we'll see where the wardrobe comes in Oh, man. So Joe um, is having her moment with Magnus, and they get to spend some time together. And uh, Henry brings Alice home after mm -hmm. they have that conversation in the park. Then we get a moment with Henry and Joe together. And he essentially tells her that, like, you know, there's a lot of big powers at play, and it's easy to get caught up in it, but we astronauts got to stick together. Um, which I thought was cool, but at the same time, it's like, he probably has ulterior motives, yeah, right? <laughs> probably. Yeah. I mean, I also think it's funny because this whole time when they're having these investigations and interrogating all the astronauts, Arena is kind of like the head of it and very mm. much trying to dismiss uh, Joe's perspective that it was definitely this cosmonaut, um, you know, which she looked up a picture of that, <laughs> the, uh, you know, space gear and... Got up a picture of Arena. Oh. <laughs> so it's like, yep, yeah, Arena doesn't want this to be found because that might be her other, uh, you know, duality, doppelganger. Her sister. Her sister. Her sister. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we don't know, like, if Henry and Arena know about Bud and, you know, other people out there who may be like them. Mm -hmm. um, but we do see, towards the end of the episode, we cut back to... The future, the other universe, wherever, with um, 
Joe and Alice in the snow. Mm -hmm. And Alice stops Joe and is like, I don't think that there is another me out there. And I don't think that you're my mom. And then, surprisingly, (laughs) Joe is like, I think you're right. And then Alice is like, what did you do with my mom? (laughs) Where's my mom? And then, like, sirens. Yeah. Like, what's happening? So, do you think that there's more than one Joe? I don't know. I don't I mean, the other thing that in this episode that we get is a lot of Bud. Um, and at these conventions, like, he brings up his book. And the guy that he's talking with on one of the panels is like, you have a lot of inconsistencies in your book. You don't even call your dog the right name in your book. There's, like, so many mistakes. It's like somebody told you a story that yeah. you weren't even a part of. He's a, that guy's a conspiracy <laughs> theorist who thinks the moon landing was fake. But yeah, he, that's true. he does bring up some points about, like, there being inconsistencies with Bud's mm-hmm. story. So it's like, is Bud, are Bud and Henry working together? Is there, like, some I kind mean, of cover-up? it seems like he's very much aware of Henry because he's, like, in his defense of himself and, like, him saving his other, or trying to save the other two astronauts he was up there with. He said that he fixed it, and when he fixed it, they weren't dead, and then he, like, blacked out, and then they were dead, and he said it was Henry's fault. He was, like, very adamant that Mm. it wasn't him, it was Henry. So he seems to be very much aware of this other version of him. That's true. Unless he's referring to himself in the third person. He must know about (laughs) it. His his (laughs) other self that he can't, like, cope with. (laughs) The bad deeds. And then Bud does do a murder. There, there is a murder that happens, um, which I, I love Breaking Bad, and I love this actor uh, on Breaking Bad. And I'm, I'm glad that we got a little taste of that, yeah, <laughs> because that so I think good. he's such a, a great, intimidating presence. But, I mean, also, he goes to the table where the conspiracy theorist guy is, is like, with his or friends or family or whatever, and he's like, I need you to take a walk with me, and then just walks away. Yeah. And so I, I guess those people were just like, yeah, sure. This guy that you had an argument with publicly <laughs> like, earlier today, why don't you go off alone with him on this cruise ship? Yeah, and ta-ta. we'll see you later, yeah. <laughs> Have fun. We'll be here. So anyway, that guy had it oh, coming, yeah. but I, <laughs> it was really yeah. funny that he just decided to go on that stroll. There's just so much in this episode um, one of the other things that was interesting was when they go and visit Paul's grave. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and then Joe asks for a moment alone uh, with Paul. And then she actually sees Paul. Oh. And, yeah. And Paul is holding some flowers. Um, and we hear Paul reciting this poem by Edith Sadergran, a, Sw- a Swedish Finnish poet. Um, and that's where we get the episode title. Somewhere in space hangs my heart, from it stream sparks into other intemperate hearts. Mm. So, that was know. pretty wild. That Yeah, that was great. It's Yeah, it's like, is he alive in this other universe, and is Joe dead? Is he, is he visiting her grave instead, and like, We also saw, side? he's in a similar state to her, mm-hmm. where he's, he's like hurt and recovering and walking with a cane. Mm-hmm. So... Yes, are they sort of, is this is this like a mirror that they're, or I guess like some kind mm-hmm. of window where they can see each other? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we don't know. It was just for a moment and only <laughs> Joe was able to see him, so yeah. we'll have to wait and see what happens. Yeah. Our unreliable narrator says that. <laughs> um, oh, I also love the choice of music when we have uh, Henry and Arena and they're having their intimate, sexy moment. And she says, uh, first we learn that she's apparently dying of cancer. Oh, yeah. Um, but then also she's like, pick the, pick the music. And he picks a song, and the lyrics are, somewhere there has to be the other half of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love that. <laughs> Great choice of music. Um, and while they're sort of having this moment, um, we are cutting back and forth between their intimate moment and... Um, Bud confronting the conspiracy theorist. Mm -hmm. And right when Bud commits a murder, um, Henry sort of sees uh, Arena's, like, corpse face. The same face that Joe saw in the cosmonaut um, that burst into the uh, space station. So, Oh, man. It's all connected. It's all connected. (laughs) It's all pretty wild. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around it all. 
I don't know what's going to happen. I do think that maybe Arena's dying because of the pills and not because, of, or got cancer from the pills. <laughs> like, is there some kind of, like, conspiracy with all of these organizations that were organizing the space station? I don't know. I don't maybe know. that's just me. <laughs> but I'm excited to we'll see, see what happens in the next episode, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, thank you all for watching. Welcome to the club. Uh, subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a review. Tell us what you thought about this episode. Um, we're on social media at Take This TV on TikTok and Instagram. And remember, it's, it's dangerous, dangerous to watch, watch TV, TV alone. alone.